gonna be getting into hellraiser hellraiser 2022 um i guess you could say this hellraiser that is on hulu right now is somewhat of a reboot i guess you would say um of the hellraiser franchise uh the hellraiser mm-hmm. franchise which the first movie came out in 1987 um the hellraiser franchise is based on the uh horror classic clive barker's uh, horror classic there uh and this it deals with a young woman uh the young woman by the name of riley who is an addict um, and she's a specifically an alcoholic, uh, specifically. Um, I don't know if they said she did, she dabbled in any other substance like drugs or anything. It was just specifically alcohol, I believe. Uh, but I, I, I don't, I don't think they actually say what she was addicted to in, in the film. If I, if I'm remembering right. All right. Cause I was, yeah. Cause I, I was trying to see what, cause I don't think they yeah specifically say what she's addicted to. I think cause there's a scene where they say, well, we don't drink in front of her. So I just maybe assume that this meant that maybe she was an alcoholic or something like that. Um, so yeah, um, you have a woman in Riley, uh, who is an addict. Um, and that's kind of what these Cenobites love. They kind of love those addictive personalities. Um, so here, um, you know, you have this young addicted woman who comes into a possession of an ancient puzzle box, um, kind of the most fucked up Rubik's Cube you ever will get in your life. Um, and then, you know, kind of unaware, messing around with it, um, she summons the Cenobites, uh, the Cenobites that eventually kind of come and take her brother, Matt, um, and then matt and then riley and friends of matt as well as friends of hers and even matt's boyfriend um and her boyfriend go look for her lost brother um being trapped by the cinnabites and try to find a way to get him back um so uh nick he uh this was my first hellraiser movie um i haven't seen any of the other ones prior uh but nick he was kind of going on a little bit of one of his during his horror movie watching um each day of october watching a different horror movie he saw the first hellraiser and the second one so i'd love to hear his perspective um on this new one so what were some of your thoughts on hellraiser 2022 okay. So some of my thoughts about Hellraiser 2022, the the original story by Clive Barker, it was very similar to Candyman in that, well, the original film, was. it's very similar to Candyman in that the most iconic thing about both films, they don't really show up until like more than halfway through the film. And with uh, the original Hellraiser, Clive Barker, he was drawing on a lot of his own experiences being a gay man growing up in london during the uh during the uh 70s and the 80s and a lot of themes of of uh of snm and a lot of uh examining the borders between pleasure and pain and exploring those themes through the cenobites which something fascinating that came to me watching the original films is that the cenobites don't look at what they do as as evil they are kind of this this chaotic neutral that are just you called us i'm just giving you the experience that you asked for experience beyond comprehension and that's something that is so fascinating even uh something that i think bruckner gets so well towards the end of this film however Mm. i think kind of a weakness of it a lot of the sexual nature of the original story is kind of taken out of it, which could be a, a bad thing, depending on how you, how you, uh, depending on your connection to Hellraiser. I, I just saw the film for the first time this past week, so I'm not as strongly connected it, to it. I love the original movie. Hellraiser 2 is probably one of the greatest sequels ever, but I think Bruckner is trying to tackle different themes here with this film than Barker did with the original. Hmm. Okay. And what themes do you think those are? Well, similar to, uh, to, uh, Bruckner's last film, uh, the night house, he's tackling themes about like addiction in in this film Mm. and specifically with the character of Riley. And he touches on a similar Barker theme with, uh, that just never ending drive to seek pleasure with the character played by a David Vish by a Goran Vishnik who plays a, who is a character in the cold open of the film who is like kind of tricking people into solving the lament configuration. Hmm. 
Yeah. Um, who people know, he was in ER. He was kind of in that series. Um, he was also in that time travel show on NBC. Um, he's aged really wonderfully, by the way. Yeah, still a you know, really good looking guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's aged? Oh, you say? I'm sorry. Wait, he's a he's aged yeah <laughs> yeah i mean he still kind of pretty much looks the same actually i was like yeah it's pretty pretty amazing actually <laughs> good for him um uh, yeah um yeah i i kind of like the cold opening that you did like you say exploring i mean i know that sex was a big part of the the first hellraiser movie and the earlier kind of movies um being that kind of that 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 seek for more pleasure and you have that in the Gorn uh, Vishnu character who's really seeking the ultimate kind of pleasure and kind of wishing that um and you do see like a scene where you know you see you know a person walks behind you know walks past a you know kind of a, a an orgy and everything like that um but it really doesn't play that much of a big part of it um it's more about addiction um and I, I guess something similar you would see like you know uh, speaking a little bit about mike flanagan uh earlier about you know he's got this new series midnight club a lot of his themes throughout his projects is addiction is people struggling with that overcoming it uh like you see that in kind of different things uh in his different projects usually there's a person who is an addict of something of drugs of alcohol or something like that um and 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 i loved uh, this director david uh bruckner his previous work the night house it was on my list of favorite films of the year is also on your list um and that film tackling a lot of stuff dealing with just like depression and suicide and moving on and and uh you know how do you deal with that and the hole that that leaves um and i think with this um I don't think it's as well acted as something like The Night House. I mean, really, it was mainly just Rebecca Hall, really. I mean, it was really just mainly her throughout the film uh, and her performance. And she's a veteran talent. She's a veteran actress. Um, the, you have a lot of people in this movie who, um, except for Goran Vishnik, I don't really know any of these other people. I don't know if you've ever seen them anywhere else before. Uh, but yeah I've, 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 yeah, I've seen a couple of these actors before. I've seen... Uh, I've seen... Uh, uh, Odessa Azion, she was in uh, a CBS show, Fam, and uh, the Netflix show, uh, Grand Army. I haven't seen that. You have actors like uh, Brandon Flynn, who was in 13 Reasons Why as uh, as Riley's brother. And you have Selena Lowe, who is one of my fa- who was probably one of my favorite parts of that Hulu film Boss Level a couple of years ago. She's playing one of the uh, one of the Cenobites. Mm, yeah. Uh, speaking of, of course, the uh, big, se- the of course, the biggest selling point of this film is you have Jamie Clayton who is taking on the role of Pinhead, or as credited here, the priest. Mm. And speaking of, like, since we're talking about the Cenobites, how do you like this look of the Cenobites compared to the earlier films with the Cenobites? Well, I I think um, I think with Clive Barker who directed the original film, when he was adapting his own work, he was drawing on a lot of a lot of that um that snm inspiration that kind of drove him to wrote to write, create the cenobites so they were like clad in leather and stuff that was be taken and ripped off and stuff like the matrix and you know most 90s to mid 2000s action films so i remember reading an interview with uh, david bruckner when he was talking about the film and the redesign of the cenobites and he's like yeah they're all about like skin and leather is just like more skin so it's less snm and more just body modification that taken inspiration with with the redesigned cenobites and it looks fantastic the practical effects and i guess uh mild touches of cg they they look amazing especially uh i love the redesign of pinhead herself or mm. themselves yeah uh yeah uh the cenobite you know he said is called by priest um does have a great look uh to them and then all the other cenobites um you know like the the selena low cenobite she was particularly interesting because almost like she looked like a, a a messed up umbrella almost like like you know what i mean like the way her skin was kind of folding over her head so you have all these cenobites who are just like yeah like a lot of body modifications and things like that that looked very freaky um you also had the other cenobite that looked like kind of like a japanese mech or something like that like a like an android or something uh, that split its arms apart um that was really freaky um so I did like a like a lot of the look of, of kind of the different Cenobites. Um, in contrast to like I said, you know, a lot of leather as opposed to like the nineteen eighty and eighty seven version, a lot of leather BDSM stuff. Um, I think it's just different 
sensibilities, different tastes. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. you don't want to do the same thing you did before with the Cenobites, change it up some. Um, do you think that it was kind of a mistake? Because, like you said, they don't really like the main sin. The priest Cenobite doesn't really show up uh, until kind of almost halfway through the movie. Uh, do you think that was a little bit of a mistake? Like waiting that long to drop the kind of major kind of Cenobite? I. I don't see that as a mistake because I I think even in the 87 film, the Cenobites don't show up properly until like almost two thirds of the way through the film. And I think you needed that time to just kind of have this air of mystery around them, at least in this version of the story. You kind of needed to like see what they're about before giving them an actual physical presence. Because even in... E- e- even in Barker's story, that the Cenobites are not the are not the most evil thing in in them. It's us. We're the actual monsters. The Cenobites are just there. They are just explorers gifting us this new experience that they think that we are seeking. Hmm. Mm. And I do love with the priest character, I do love like the voice they do because they do a little bit of voice modulation um, with, you know, with them. And it kind of make it sound even more kind of a little bit more kind of scary and everything, um, which I did like um, the presence of the priest um, is very good. Um, you know, that that kind of creepiness of just all that, that creepiness of calmness that the priest has throughout of it, I think, is is very intimidating. Um, and, and gives good yeah, I remember, presence. I remember, yeah, I remember reading interviews with uh, Doug Bradley, who played uh, Pinhead in the 87 original, and when he was talking about Clive Barker's direction, every single take, it was like, do less. Do less. It, it's like, they're meant to be like a true neutral. Mm, yeah. Um, and this is, uh, you know, Jamie Clayt, when she's, when they are not all stick with needles and everything like, yeah, this is what they're going to look like when they're all laid there. But uh, even with the, the head full of needles, I go, oh, it's still, still pretty good look. Still pretty good. <laughs> you know? There's like, a, there's like a difference in in the portrayal of Pinhead in this because I, I think going back to a lot of the themes of, uh, of Hellraiser and with the Cenobites, they're meant to be seductive in a way. Like the original Hellraiser, it watching it it feels like you're not supposed to be watching it and that's kind of what's titillating about it in a sense and i think that comes off more with uh, jamie clayton's take on the character than let me rephrase that um it comes off i think a little more palatable in this version of the story played by jamie clayton because doug bradley as iconic as he is his version of the character eventually devolved into just being that that like Freddy Krueger esque parody of what Pinhead was supposed to be. Mm. Okay. Huh. Um, how did you like the the human characters in this? Uh, I think the best human character is Riley, who's played by uh, Odessa Izon. I think she has the most to do. And Gordon Bishnick, he is delightful as uh, the main human antagonist of this. Everybody else was kind of just like meat bags. However, when they are at the mercy of the Cenobites, I believe every single second that they are like in pain. I believe every shriek. I believe every yelp for mercy. It's it it gets hard to watch, but credit to to the actors involved. That's when this movie really shines. And even though I kind of think this film does have a bit of a slower start, once the Cenobites come into this, this movie is kicked into high gear and it's entertaining throughout the rest of its runtime. Mm, yeah, uh, I think with the with the kind of the the human characters in this, um, I think there's some kind of good drama with like Matt and Riley because they're brother and sister, and you know her being an addict and what it's like living with an addict and kind of the the stress that is, you know, of like really having to constantly worry about a, a, just another adult. You know what I mean? I, that 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 that's just so kind of worrisome at times. Um, so I kind of felt a lot of that in their scenes. Um, I thought a lot of the other kind of people, like you had, you know, his boyfriend, Colin, and then you had the other person who lived in the house, uh, the apartment, you had Nova who was there. Well, I mean, they're kind of, they're okay. I, I mean, I think they're fine. Um, they're not given, they're not given much to do. Yeah. Um, which isn't, isn't yeah. yeah, which isn't a problem on them. However, when they are, uh, given their time to shine, I think they do it fairly well. 
Yeah, I, I think they're okay. It's just, like I said, it's, it, they don't really get, get a, a lot of time to really do much. Um, you also have Trevor, who's uh, Riley's boyfriend in this. Um, again, I think he's fine. He's okay. Um, not particularly anything really, you know, stand out all that worthy. But he's he's okay. He's, I think he's good. And like I said, when they are, you know, some of them are captured by the Cenobites, um, that is a great, you know, that is a great moment. Because, like, you know, if you, you know, meet someone like jason or freddie it's pretty quick i mean you think like really with jason it's like okay you chop through the machete it's kind of done almost um this it's like michael myers michael myers he'll fuck you up but you know there's an eventual end to it the whole idea of the cenobites is it's like we have such sights to show you your suffering will be <laughs> legendary in hell <laughs> uh yeah so i mean that's just like that that's just kind of i think a little bit more terrifying the way it just kind of goes on you know what i mean just want to kind of be over with quick um so i thought that you know i think they did that pretty well a lot of those scenes um uh i said nova i'm sorry nora i said nova with her kid nora is what i'm sorry about that um like when uh yeah so i thought they did a lot of kind of good stuff there um where they were captured and they were, you know, kind of attacked by the Cenobites. I thought that made it really good. Um, yeah. Uh, I think, it, you know, uh, you, do you think it is as gory as the 1987 one? Do you think, or they, you do you think they tone it down some or? I, I mean, I think the gore is uh, highly toned down compared to, to the 87 film. But in the 87 film, most of the conceit is, is this like this uh, abusive relationship between uh, a character Frank who escaped the Cenobites and is like reconstituting himself? So you see his like skeleton almost, and then he like builds gets muscle after forcing his like partner to murder people so he can feed. So this is a very different subject matter compared to the '87 film. It almost fear feels unfair to compare the two. Mm. Okay. Um, well, it really makes me want to check out the 1987 film for sure, um, and and kind of watch it. Um, yeah, but with this one, um, I did enjoy it. Um, I wasn't particularly blown away by it. Not like I was the Night House. I thought the Night House was very very good and and a, and a great film throughout. Um, and really intrigued me to see. I mean, some of the stuff like knowing about trying to what you see with these characters, learning about more about the lore of the Cenobites, the 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 uh, puzzle boxes, and each one means a different thing. That was also very interesting um, to see them kind of do that. Uh, but um, I just thought, you know, as a horror movie, you know, uh, or just a movie period. It's just good. I think it's solid. Um, I think it's on a great place. Stream it, you know, on Hulu. Um, and I think that's very good. Um, and I think, you know, you do have a lot of these kind of characters. Um, and I think the, the big, the probably the best standout here, just human character wise, is probably Riley, like you said. Um, I think she has just a lot more to do, more range of emotion to kind of go through um, in this. Um, she kind of almost like with her hair, she kind of looked like uh, that character from Stranger Things, Eddie. She kind of looked a little bit like Eddie a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I thought she yeah, was. I really, I, re I, really, I really love when she shredded out to Master of Puppets in order to distract <laughs> the Cenobites. Yeah, I, that would have perfectly fit. I was like, yeah, that would have perfectly been in line <laughs> with this. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I thought she was very good. I thought, you know, uh, uh, Jamie um, uh, Clayton as the priest. Great job, great performance. I like a lot of the other Cenobites. Great performance, you know, great presence. You felt it, um, but yeah. Um, and I so I thought this was just yeah, it was just fine. Um, is it along of kind of like we like I said, we get a lot of great horror stuff lately, uh, back to back to back. It seems like I think this is. It's just good, you know what I mean. I think a lot of people will probably love it. Um, I don't know what the reception is from diehard Hellraiser fans um, is, but uh, for someone like me who is just this is the first one, I think it's just solid. I think it's just good. Uh, so I give it a high stream it for me. What about you? I, I mean, I I mean, I don't think there's a lot of diehard Hellraiser fans because of how shitty the movies end up being. It's like they hit, they eventually hit all of the like you know your franchise is dead when you do x x and x it's like when you go found footage when you go to space and when you like uh have a film made in a completely different country with none of the original cast um <clears throat> for me uh having just recently uh seen the 87 original doing a lot of research about what clive barker was intending for with that story I had a great grand old time with this. I think the human characters, it does border a little bit on the melodramatic, but 
I think the actors, at least uh, at least uh, Odessa Aizan and Brandon Flynn, who they have probably have the heavier scenes of it, I thought they worked really well together. I think the film does kind of start fairly slow introducing Riley, but once the once the once the box is is solved and the Cenobites show up, this movie it's it's kind of nonstop in its brutality. I think the uh, the look of the Cenobites, I dra- I <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> I, I think the themes that uh, that Bruckner is touching on with this film, I think they kind of hit a little bit better, considering where the original Hellraiser franchise goes. I think this probably has one of the best endings of a Hellraiser film. Now that I think about it just with the whole conversation between Riley and Priest, it, it was, it felt heartbreaking. It hit so well, especially with playing in the themes of addiction on this film. I, this is probably like the third best Hellraiser movie or like one of the better Hellraiser movies. I probably put <laughs> one, then either this or two. And <laughs> I'm just laughing at you. She's trying to get that really, fly. Hang, trying to get that fly. Huh? It's in my, fucking eyeline i can't fucking see um but i love the hell out of this movie it was brutal throughout i love the themes that this movie is tackling i love jamie clayton's on uh the priest it is going back to what barker and what uh doug bradley were going for in the original film i give this a very strong tune in i i dug this movie will it be will i regard it as one of the best horror movies of the year Probably not, but it's one I thoroughly enjoy. Mm. Mm, nice. Uh, so, high stream it and high tune in uh, for uh, Hellraiser.